Hello, my beautiful friends. Namaste. I'm Jill Loftus of New It Astrology. Welcome to your planetary energy forecast for the week of January the 22nd, 2024. This is another really powerful week. There's a lot going on astrologically, a lot of energy to manage. Now, as we start the week, don't forget the sun and Pluto are traveling very close together. Now, they met up uh, over the weekend, both moved into the sign of uh, Aquarius together. And now the sun is moving on, right? Moving rapidly away, but they're still pretty close. And Pluto energy can sometimes fire late. And so definitely pay attention to things that are related to the new Aquarian energy of Pluto. Things that relate to groups, things that relate to revolutions, to breaking free, things that relate to technological advances. All of those things will be coming into focus and we're getting a much better grasp now of what the next 20 years of Pluto and Aquarius is gonna look like. This week is also very busy otherwise, though. There are a lot of planetary alignments and some moon voids, a full moon. So let's uh, stick together with me <laughs> through this. And then once I've told you about the planetary energies for each day, I will give you three ways to maximize my, the high vibrational energies of the week and three ways to kind of watch out for uh, potential pitfalls of the week. All right. So let's start with uh, Monday the 22nd. So We've got that Pluto sun pretty close together. We've also got uh, Saturn very close to Hygieia. And I think this is interesting. I just, um, every so often I check the asteroids. Hygieia is the uh, asteroid that relates to health and healing. Very close to Saturn and Pisces. I find it interesting we just came out with this uh, new study about microplastics in the water. I would pay attention to water and water issues this week. In particular, make sure that the water that you are consuming is clean and maximize the uh, potentials for you to either come up with a better way to filter or store your own water supply. All right. That's something to really, that's really important. All right. Um, now Mars is also getting really close to Mercury here. All right. So they're coming very close together. So the Mercury is the mind and communication and Mars is action. They're very, uh, they're both in Capricorn. All right. And so this urge to say and to do is going to be incredibly strong, all right? So moderate, take a breath, slow down any interactions, knocking out that really quick email or text, you know, watching the way you speak to anybody. All week, I want you to pay attention to that. All right. We've also got an interesting uh, grouping of moon voids, Monday the 22nd, 3.40 p.m. Eastern until 4.51 p.m. Eastern. So not a good time to uh, commit to anything, write a contract, etc. Um, take note of the, the future ones because there are some long ones over the week. Next up, we have on the 23rd, we have Venus moving into the sign of Capricorn. And so now this is adding to the pileup of planets in Capricorn. Capricorn wants discipline. Capricorn wants effort. And so this is where you put love and energy through acts of service out into your life. All right. On the 24th, we've got that Mars and Capricorn beginning to square up to Chiron and Aries. This could introduce some arguments. You've got to really look at whether you're operating from your highest self. Try to not um, operate from your wounds, right? From where, where you're broken, uh, but instead from where you're healed. I think I've, I've said that before. We've got another moon void on the 24th. It voids at 5.58 p.m. Eastern until 2.37 a.m. the next day. A very long moon void. Please adjust for your time zone. All right, our full moon for this month is on January the 25th at 12.54 p.m. Eastern, 5 degrees, 15 minutes of the sign of Leo. Now, this full moon is a completion cycle in that area of life for you, but note that it is across the sky from Pluto, right, in a tense aspect there, and also in a tense aspect to Jupiter. And so I would be cautious in your rituals. Yes, you want to let go of anything that blocks your light, anything that blocks your creative power, your beautiful, beautiful Leo soul, wherever that is in your chart. But do watch because authority figures might be there. There could be technological issues. Anything that's over the top is going to be... Um, pushed back, right? Uh, so I would make sure that you, are, if you're going to ritualize this day, that you keep your rituals pretty simple, pretty basic, and, um, and just watch out for any potential power struggles. You might find that you uh, cut the cord on something and there's some repercussions. So just, just be wise, wise in your manifestations. All right. On the 26th, we have the sun in a square to Jupiter. So squaring from the Aquarius uh, part of your chart over to the Taurus area of chart. 
of your chart. So this could be um, even, you know, any Jupiter contact tends to bring blessings, but this could be like a going too big, too hard, too fast. So it's just asking you to slow it down a little bit, especially with that, um, uh, with that tension that you're, you're still in that energy of the full moon of the previous day. Another uh, long moon void, 4.19 p.m. Eastern on the 26th until 2.11 p.m. Eastern on the 27th. So when you make up on the morning of the 27th, remember the moon is void all day until 2.11 p.m. Eastern. All right. So Saturday, it's uh, it's a Saturday. So you know maybe you can schedule some sort of time for creative pursuits and, you know, meditation and things like that, but not a time for deep linear thinking or accomplishment. Now, that is the day that Uranus is going to pause in the sky and begin to move forward at um, 19 degrees of the sign of Taurus. And so there could be something on the 27th that comes up for you that really gives you an idea of, wow, okay, now I'm leaping forward, I'm moving forward. Take note of the symbols anytime those outer planets station. Um, it really gives us a little bit of a, a, a lesson, so to speak, of what's going on in that area of life. So pay attention to that. That is also when Mars and Mercury are going to merge in Capricorn, all right, and both be in that clash patterning with Chiron. This is going to be some hard conversations. Relationships are being pressured, as you know, so have the difficult conversations. Um, find that level of honesty where you're telling your truth but not trying to actively, you know, hurt or harm. There could be some relationship karma, especially over the weekend, that comes kind of to a culmination. Um, we are luckily at the end of the week, 27th, 28th, picking up a lovely trine from Venus in Capricorn to Saturn in Pisces. So that is an aid, a, a little help, a little healing. So acts of service, for, again, for the people that you love. And then on the 28th, we've got that exact Mars and Mercury merging together, 18 degrees of the sign of Capricorn and square to the nodes of fate. Again, this is bringing up those difficult relationships, but also it could bring up power struggles, issues with authority figures, people in charge because of uh, Capricornian energy. Um, and but then we had to also uh, get the, a beautiful trine from the Mars and the Mercury to Uranus. So beautiful blessings coming in there, possible synchronicities and Venus and Capricorn and Jupiter are in a trine and you know, we've still got that beautiful Jupiter sextile to Saturn that kind of kind of floats us along through the entire month. So even though there's a lot happening this week, there are definitely silver linings. Look for them. Seek them out. All right. I am saying for this week, the three things to high vibe this week is be Capricorn about it. <laughs> be steady. Be disciplined. Um, watch, you know, be a little more stoic. Okay worry about your own damn self kind of week, right? All right. Um, release something that blocks your light for that full moon in Leo. Let, let something go. Let yourself shine. Let yourself be your perfect, beautiful, amazing self. All right. Let go of the things that keep you from being that person. And then finally, really feed your passion projects. I feel like there's a lot of like goodness here that really can tell you, hey, this is what's really meaningful to you. So try to make sure that you are carving out time and energy for those passion projects. The three shadows that I really want you to watch out for this week are um, issues with people who are in charge, issues with the rules, issues with butting up against things that um, that maybe feel a little uncomfortable, uncomfortable conversations. So yeah, I would classify that in here as well. So just watch, watch those issues. Don't turn it into a um, an ego driven argument. Don't turn it into something that it's not, right? Um, second of all, there can be because of this little bit of Jupiter sun going on and the Jupiter, you know, because of the interactions with Jupiter and Venus here, there could be some unfounded optimism, okay? I tend to be an optimistic person, absolutely. But make sure that there's something to your optimism. Don't be just like, yeah, well, whatever, all right? This is a week where you need to know the rules, you need to know the structure, and you need to work with reality, all right? And then finally, start letting go of those relationships that are not working, all right? Whether you need to, uh, what's the term that the some celebrity used once? Conscious uncoupling. Whether you need to really just sit down with somebody and say, look, you know, this isn't working. This is what we need to do. Or I want to make this work. How are we going to fix it, right? Do the work on those um, relationship issues. But if, if, 
if a relationship has expired and uh, it's time to move on, go ahead and keep going. Keep, keep moving on. The karma might be up. All right, friends, stay steady, stay grounded. Um, definitely a week to, uh, to stick to your meditative practices, do your mantra, keep the mind steady. Um, again, don't engage, don't engage with people who are just thrashing about uncertain about what's going on. All right. Um, don't engage with them. All right. Um, it's only a tug of war if two people hold the rope, right? All right. I appreciate your patience. I hope this was useful, helpful. If it was, please comment below and I'll see you next week. Bye.